Rainworld's workshop is now half a year old. This month has been pretty slow for modding, but maybe everyone's working on cool top secret projects or something, I don't know. As always, spoiler warning for downpour. Now I know this is really corny, but only a small percentage of you are subscribed. <laughs> Please subscribe, I'm starving. Anyway, let's get on with the mods. Cat Punch Punch by Harvey gives Slugcat a nasty right hook, which it could use to drop creatures with. The best part about the mod is swallowed items give Slugcat's punch a different attribute. For example, swallowing a rock makes the punch faster. Or swallowing a pearl makes the punches pacifist punches, which tame creatures. I guess it's a form of Aikido, who knows. And it's fun to discover how items affect the punch. It's kind of like a pseudo magic system mod, which is a mod idea that no one's fully capitalised on yet. The issues with the mod is that it's unbalanced, which is obvious, and a disappointing amount of items actually affect the punch, but that is subject to change. It's also pretty buggy and caused a bunch of weird glitches, like it just dematerialised my slug cat sometimes, so be careful. Room Rando Community Logic by Floof Cheeks allows the Room Randomizer mod to work on custom regions. Now you can make Oil Station more of a pain to navigate. I have beef with that region. The rest of Old New Horizons is fine, I'll review it later. This mod also supports Lost Cranny Randomizer, which is like the most pointless thing ever because it's like four rooms, but I'm grateful for its inclusion. I also want to talk about the normal room randomizer by Floof Cheeks. I already covered it before, but I didn't realise how in-depth it goes into its config. Like, you can customise it a ton, which is really nice. So props to the developer and it's worth checking out. Triple Jump by Laura adds the iconic Mario Triple Jump to Rain World. This movement can be pulled off by using the boost from turning around and then jumping three times consecutively, resulting in a pretty powerful final jump. It's a very simple mod that adds a fun new movement to the game. And it's even more fun on Goreman since you can crush things with your final jump. The Vinky by Ole Kole adds a stylish new slug cat. This funky fresh fella looks like it came straight out of Jet Set Radio, with its skill set and design being similar to the character Beat from the game. I like the Vinky's glasses as they remind me of Genthru from Hunter x Hunter. However though, this mod uses a Dress My Slug Cat dependency which is points deducted. Modded slug cats are cooler when they have standalone sprites. However, its abilities more than make up for that fact. First of all, it can use its wicked gadgets to grind on rails, horizontal ones and vertical ones. This is much faster than climbing the pole, but at the cost of constantly moving along it. The Vinky can also perform a trick jump from a pole, which is much more stylish and gives more height than a usual jump. Its other ability is Graffiti Mode, which lets the Vinky commit acts of vandalism. Right now, this is just a cosmetic thing, but it is a cool cosmetic thing, goddammit. This mod also supports you adding your own custom decals in graffiti mode. Sadly, I couldn't get this working for some reason, but it sounds like a cool feature. Overall, I love the idea behind this slug cat, and I think it has great potential if it's updated. Right now, I think there needs to be more poles to grind on in regions, since horizontal poles are actually really uncommon to find. The region changes are planned, so I'm not too pressed about it. Iterator TTS by Cat Not Dog makes the iterator dialogue text to speech. I am growing increasingly impatient with the traffic of your kind through me and my premises. Finally, voice acting in Rainworld and its lore accurate. Wow. But in all seriousness though, this is a good mod if you have trouble reading the dialogue. What a strange specimen you are. My memory does not serve me well, but it has been a long time since I've encountered one of your species. The Gravel Eater by King Max the Two. This slurp juice looking fella has the best modded intro cutscene so far. Like the name implies, the Gravel Eater eats gravel, with the rocks giving it three-fourths of the food pip and spears giving it one. The Gravel Eater is actually quite a complex slug cat, so this might be quite a long review. But here goes. Firstly, the passives the Gravel Eater has. If there's nothing in its stomach, you can hold grab to regurgitate a rock, for the cost of one food pip. The Gravel Eater's food will also passively decline by one over a period of time. If there's no food pips left, the Gravel Eater will die, but this way of dying is very avoidable. Now onto the Gravel Eater's main power, the Nourishment States. The first Nourishment State is Malnourished, which can be achieved by starving or by trying to regurgitate a rock while at zero food, while also being in the Nourished State, which I'll talk about in a second. The downsides of the Malnourished State is that the Gravel Eater will experience frequent tummy aches, which are basically seizures, or more annoying starve exhaustion. However, it will get the ability to maul creatures, and its item throwing skill is increased. However, the best part about the Malnourished state is the movement. The Gravel Eater's movement techniques are buffed during this state, with the backflip being similar to Rivulet's in height, 
or the leap getting a massive distance boost. Overall, it's a really simple change to movement, but it's actually a lot of fun and feels actually pretty unique. Sort of like a mix between Artificer and Rivulet. In my testing, the Malnourished State is the better build for this Slugcat, just because you can move faster. The only downside is in order to hibernate, you need to be in the Nourished State. So the Nourished State is achieved by getting full food pips when malnourished, or after successfully hibernating in a shelter. The Gravel Eater is completely crippled in this state, with its movement speed being incredibly slow. The lesser benefits of being in this state is that it can survive projectiles, which I don't think worked, and has a body slam, which also I don't think worked. It also has complete immunity to worm grass, which is nice. The fully nourished state's main ability is the crafting. If you try to eat an item when the gravel eater is full, it will actually swallow it and store it in its stomach instead. And then the next time it passively loses a food pip, it can spit out a brand new item. Now there's not many recipes, and it's mainly used for crafting fire eggs and fire spears. That's pretty cool anyway. And it keeps the fire item crafting recipes not too powerful, as you have to wait for them, kind of like it's Clash of Clans or something. The Gravel Eater also has a custom world state. The campaign takes place after Five Pebbles' collapse, but before the Ice Age. The regions that are not Silent Construct have non-lethal rain, and so they also have a day-night cycle. A really nice detail is that some of these regions actually have alternate threat musics at night. Like, here's the outskirts one I randomly stumbled upon. I have big respect for details like this when modding. Silent Construct itself has much more raw active inside of it, which makes it deadlier to traverse. Drainage System has a couple of new rooms, which are basically less overgrown versions of their undergrowth counterparts. And finally, some of Sky Islands is now shrouded in a dust storm. This doesn't have any gameplay implications, but it looks sick, so it doesn't really matter. I do wish the palettes were changed a bit more, since the region's palettes are drastically changed during Rivulet's time. It kind of doesn't make sense for Outskirts just to go back to how it usually looked. And it would be cool if more regions got the Sky Islands drainage system treatment, where they got updated substantially, as I love interesting world state changes in custom slugcats. Overall, the Gravel Eater actually surprised me. I thought it was just a joke mod, but it's actually really in-depth and interesting. I recommend this slugcat to people who enjoyed Gorman's like, technicality, as this is also a technical slug in my opinion, with its abilities having a higher learning curve than other slugcats. Some word of advice, avoid areas with tons of water as this slugcat, as in both states it sucks at swimming, like, avoid it please. Long Jump by Laura adds yet another Mario manoeuvre to Rainworld. This one's a bit trickier than the triple jump, but basically the movements are forward, backward, forward, and then jump to activate the long jump. The long jump is basically a faster leap, at the cost of Slugcat going less far. Overall, a pretty fun movement to do. I'm not really a movement person, however. It's fun to chain it with Artificer's jump, though. Laura the developer has released a bunch of movement mods, so if you're interested in Rainworld movement, you might want to check out all their mods. Drone Master by Harvey adds a robotic Slugcat to the game. I covered Drone Master like four months ago, but I'm here to inform you that the Drone Master campaign is complete. That means there is a new ending to achieve that is not the Ascension one. A quick summary of Drone Master is that it can survive multiple hits and has drones that can automatically shoot at targets. I'm not going to spoil too much of the campaign, but the Drone Master now has the ability to scan things when it eats them. Ooh, what does that mean? Ooh, I'll play the campaign. It also has brand new dream sequences featuring a brand new iterator, what the hell? Now before anyone gets mad at me spoiling the campaign, please, this appears cycle 2, so it's not that much of a spoiler. To conclude, it's definitely worth playing Drone Master now due to its complete campaign. Although the campaign itself is not fundamentally groundbreaking, kind of the opposite actually, ground making, the new iterator and some new graphics look absolutely amazing. Plus it is the first Slugcat with a fully complete campaign. So with all of this in mind, I am bestowing Mod of the Month onto Drone Master, as I think it's a milestone in Rainworld modding. It's kind of funny since the campaign was finished months ago, I just didn't realise. In my defence, no Discord announcements were made, and the Steam page was not updated at all. This is kind of a PSA, but any modders watching, please make sure you update the description, or even better, the mods change logs, with information about the update. It's really helpful when I'm making these videos, as I can check if anything substantial has been added in updates.
Lancer by Topicula adds three alternate versions of the Vanilla Trio to the game. They can be accessed by pressing a button, which leads to the coldest transition in modding history. All of the Lancers are slug pups with horns, and have slightly increased mobility for the cost of being smaller in size and so being unable to reach certain locations. All of the Lancers' main gimmick is their unique spear attack. Instead of throwing the spear like every other slug cat, the Lancer will perform a stab motion. This attack will deal small damage to anything it hits, and the spear will stay in the Lancer's hand. This basically completely changes how the Lancer plays to regular slug cats, which could be a good or a bad thing. These small fiends also have a block move, where if they spear at the same time a creature attacks, that attack will be negated. In my testing I could only fend off vultures, but that might be me being bad. Each Lancer Slugcat shares properties with its original counterpart. For example, the Survivor Lancer has no unique properties in this for Tories. The Hunter Lancer has all of Hunter's properties, such as Carnivore, Backspear and Limited Cycles. It also has a new ability to place a Vulture Mask on its horn, which frees up a hand slot. This attack will protect Lancer Hunter from any attacks, acting as a free block move. However, the mask successfully blocking an attack will cause the mask to fall on the ground. Spearing while a mask is on the horn will also cause it to drop, so the Vulture Mask acts as more of a defensive item when on the horn. The Monk Lancer has the special ability of being a little piss baby. It does significantly less damage than the other two, and will get tired like how Gorman does. It requires two food to hibernate and can store one, but don't be deceived. All food within its diet, which is the Monk diet by the way, gives one quarter of a food pip, meaning it's eight of food to hibernate and can store four. To top it off it has hunter spawns as well, so Lancer Monk is a brutal challenge. Credit where credit is due, I did have fun playing Monk Lancer, as the difficulty is more of a fun difficulty than a fk you difficulty if you know what I mean. All three Lancers actually have different spots on the timeline to the original three, and so have slightly altered campaigns, with there obviously being custom iterated dialogue. A cool part of Lancer is what you do in the original Slugcat campaigns actually affects your Lancer playthroughs. Without going into too much detail, I think this just alters dialogue, and nothing major, but I'm not sure. Also, the dialogue is a bit questionable at times, like what the fuck is the Monk Pebbles dialogue? Like, do not go to Pebbles as Monk Lancer, please. But the rest of the mod is definitely well made and a fun way to spice up future playthroughs. Blood by Lee Moria adds blood to the game. When a creature is damaged, it will leave a splat of blood. I mean, that's pretty much it, like what else do you want me to say? It's a cool mod because it adds another layer of immersion to the game. It's cool walking into a room and seeing the bloodstains of a previous battle, in which the contestants are long gone. Blood Mod has some good remix config, and is definitely one of those mods you just enable and keep on for the rest of your rainworlding experience. Drainage System Plus by Jevmen, and Interpret, also known as Intrepid, adds more rooms to the damp drainage system. I think these added rooms definitely nail the drainage system style, and so are very welcome in the region. The new rooms are very fun to explore and I like how they link into vanilla rooms. This mod employs the tactic of putting added rooms between existing connections, which is a good idea since it increases connectivity and spices up exploring familiar areas. The expansion also focuses on the fun rooms of Drainage System and not the boring tunnels, like I don't think it adds any submerged tunnel-like rooms. Without spoiling anything, there is a really fun point of interest found in this expansion, which felt satisfying to discover. The filtration system and garbage waste connections have also been done justice, with the rooms and spawns added to flesh out their transition. This mod also comes with Undergrowth Plus, meaning there is overgrown versions of almost every room. I feel like some rooms could be destroyed more and filled with those cool dark mushrooms, but it does imitate the undergrowth aesthetic pretty well. There is also another really cool point of interest in the region that I don't want to show because of spoilers, but to conclude both versions are definitely worth exploring and I think this mod is a gold standard of how region expansion should be done. Now on to the miscellaneous mods.
Wow, you've reached the end of the video. This one was late because I'm a bit lazy, so hopefully the next one is a bit more on time. On time being in the middle of the month, about. I do want to work on some non-modding videos in the future. But those projects are pretty ambitious, like a whole video on iterators or a rain mold iceberg is pretty hard to make. Not to mention some airframe ultra footage that I can analyse, but I'm not sure how interested people are in that. Either way, thanks for watching and hopefully I can get some more videos out soon. Goodbye!